Ein, zwei. Ja, works. Okay. So, okay, full house, thank you. Um, yeah, I would like to talk about working with generators. So my name is Andre Fischer. I'm working in the upper product management uh, uh, yeah, for the other platform. And here, the today's talk is about the different types of generators. So what, what do we have with regards to tools in order to build rub based applications? So it's quite a challenging uh, a number I would like to show. So I will start here on the left-hand side on the ADT-based generators. So what comes as part of the SAP standard, building a simple rub BO on one table, then uh, I will talk about the generator that that generates applications that that, that is really the replacement of SM30. So to uh, generate applications that are used to record customizing changes. Then we are already leaving what is delivered. So it's looking for uh, looking to the future. So the an up in no that's already 20. 2405, so you can generate uh, UIs based on interfaces that are uh, released by SAP. And then uh, it, 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 I will show a generator that allows you to generate extension fields. So similar to what you know maybe from key user tools, if you want to add a, ta uh, a field to a table then a short demo of the AI-powered generator. Then, uh, in the end, I will show two open source-based generators that have been published by me. That's on the one hand, a RUB generator with a Fiori UI, um, and the, uh, my latest publication, a tier two RFC generator that was also shown by Ingo in, on, in the Audimax, so where you can generate uh, classes that can be released so that they then can be consumed in the tier one layer. Okay, let's get started. So why do we need generators? So uh, Sasha, who had the talk before, said we should always start with a why. Why are we doing this? Um, just have a short look here. On the, on the right-hand side, you see a simple RUP business object. So the simple RUP business object that just publishes one table. And you see, you already need 10 repository objects for that. So if you, and if you start to type this, you will see that's lots of boilerplate coding because if you do that for the next table, the code looks very similar. And, and all in all in all, it's not, it's not much fun to type such code. So we would like to concentrate on the business logic, not, not on boilerplate coding. Oh, sure. So, uh, mm -hmm. here? Yes. Okay, forget it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so far I was just talking. Yeah, but here, th this is the first slide was a real interest. The other one was just the more or less the agenda. So, you see here on the right hand uh, on, on the right hand side this simple RUB BO starting with service binding, service definition, behavior definitions, CDS views, metadata extensions, and the draft table, starting from the table that you actually have created. Um, so the first generator that helps you with that is the RUB business, uh, the RUB generator, which is part of ADT, and this has been delivered as of. SAP S4 HANA 2022. So what, how does it work? You, um, you have created a table, then you can right click on the table and then there is the option to this, this generic menu entry generate ABAP repository objects. Then the dialog on the right hand side opens um, where you can select the OData UI service. It's also possible to generate a web API service. Basically, it's the same service. It's more or less that it doesn't generate any metadata extension. So it's a 
and the service binding is a different one. Yeah, and what is being generated? Okay, the same screenshot you saw, you saw these 10 objects, and we can just navigate to that system. It's already here. So that sandbox system. As a, as a good cook, I've prepared this already here, right? So this one, I can show you here how it works. You select this generate repository objects. You select this UI service, press next. Then you have to enter the package name that is here, zrub um, 100.667. You press next. And then uh, you see here certain things are um, suggested. So the, the, the naming convention here is uh, the table name. This will change in the future. This is because the ADT UI does not support side effects so far. So that will come with an upcoming version. And then the, cha the, you, uh, the, um, the suggested name could be changed, for example, based on the alias like travel that you would have that you have selected here. So you see here are all the objects that are being generated. If I press next, okay, um, you see it checks it checks that um, where is it in the behavior, right? That's because an abbreviation is there. In tables, we just have 16 places. That's always the problem. I press next and press finish. And then I continue with the presentation because it will take uh, about a minute that everything is being generated. We can later have a look at this. So next thing, so the next possible option is this business configuration management maintenance app. This is uh, it's a little bit more sophisticated, this generator, because this generates uh, not only for one table uh, CDS views, but for several tables, because customizing tables usually at least have one table and then a second table that contains the texts, for example. So um, this is also available as, as of SAP S4HANA 2022 as part of the standard. UI, it, it, it started similar. You um, right click on the table that you use, um, but then you choose the option of business configuration management. And, um, and here I have shown here on the, on the bottom, you, this only works for tables of uh, delivery class C, so customizing tables. So this is also checked if you would try this with a table that has not C, you will get an error message. Here we see more stuff which is um, uh, being generated. Oh, that's the wrong screenshot. I would have to. Um, you have, we switch to the system because then I can do this here. So you, you see here is this maintenance object um, and we can if we navigate here now, so if you, if you right click on your project name in ADT, you will all, and you're connected to a steampunk system, you see there the URL, and then if you click on this, the Fiori launchpad starts. And uh, there you see then, if you have the appropriate role, it's the business expert, you have to, you have to assign that role to you, and then there are then there is this um, custom business configuration. And the nice thing the generator does, it autom the, basically only the OData service is generated and it then registered and you don't have to create your own UI for that. So by having registered this service, 
this generic app can uh, is uh, lists this business configuration object and if i click on that automatically an editor opens so technically it's similar like the preview in fewer elements which is used here so basic thing important thing for you you don't have to create uis for that so that's the important thing and here i could now start to um uh, to maintain data and select it for, potentially for transport so that's the business configuration app so they because there is no SM30 in Steampunk. Okay, if there are any questions, please interrupt me. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The, 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 the transport is automatic. So what, what you need is here, if you are here in administration, identity access management, you have here the maintain business roles. Um, it's it's this BRP expert role that you have to use. This where is it? BRBPC expert. So if you have this role, then and then, but then in addition, you your question was good. <laughs> Yeah, okay, the, the question was how how does this uh, uh, how how does this show up in the UI? So so I, I clicked on this new entry in the Fiora launchpad and I navigated to this to this uh, business uh, I navigated here to the business process configuration and the question was how do I get this entry in the Fiora launchpad? And um, yeah, this was this. BRP expert role, and in addition, you need uh, then also the maintenance authorization. Uh, you need here in the, if we go to uh, clips, um, where is it? The services. Yeah, so here, so I, what I created here is an IIM app, and then you have to maintain this S tabu num for the table that you have to enter here, because otherwise you won't get the edit button. No, oh, this not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I uh, it, it came to me. Yes, I will. I will talk to my colleagues. Maybe. Whether there would be a way, because this is what I—that's my next slide. The to-do: you have to create the IIM app, you have to create the business catalog, and you have to assign this business catalog to a role. So, and then I would have started with the ADT link. <laughs> okay. So now we have two—we have two generators. So, next generator that we have is uh, that was a requirement, or the, the idea is we have several released uh, int interfaces. So. That are, for example, that you can use in RUB, for for example, to to create um, uh, uh, to, uh, to to create, for example, purchase orders or whatever. So the the successors of BAPIs, but I have to. It, it's not a BAPI, so these EML calls because BAPIs have been created for remote access, and they do bad things sometimes, like uh, like um, commits, though they should not do this. But it's um, therefore the comparison is not really correct. But with SAP S4 HANA cloud and on prem, we SAP deliver more and more released interfaces. And then the idea was okay, since we have all these interfaces, we should offer the customers the option to generate a UI on top of this. So, not so that they do not have to uh, recreate each and everything. And this will become available with 2405, or is available with 2405. So the systems are running now on that, and therefore it will be. It's planned to be on-prem for 2025. How does it look like? 
This time, uh, the starter object is the um, is the behavior definition, I bank TP. So that's my favorite uh, business object in uh, Rugby or in Steampunk. Why? It's 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 like the the mother-in-law, your your favorite one. So because it's uh, it's the only one. So so we have just two one, and in, in the trial you you only have um, um, you you yeah. There's a second one, the iBusiness Partner, which is not available in the trial because these are shared systems. So the iBankTP is a released object. You can right-click on this, and then it you again select a UI service. And what is being generated? You will get projection views for uh, for each uh, for each part of uh, the composition tree. So if it if it's a complex uh, business object, this can take time. Um, so iBankTP is a is a tiny one, so that that doesn't take that long. You will get a project a behavior projection. Um, then uh, here, then metadata extensions for each created projection view, and then the service definition and service binding. What is to do? Again, something you have to know. Um, at least if you're working on a steampunk system, the de developer role does not contain the authorization to create banks. So this bank was, I think, for MDGs or for some some application. We we in we we added the iBank TP uh, BO. So if we now navigate here to our um, to our system again, oh, that was my. You see here, it's uh, that's the that's the service binding. So that's the complete rub, the, the complete um, generated bo. And if I double click on it here, I I can start here the preview, and I can create a bank. So here, like Czech Republic, there the oh zz. The bank key there is four digits of five, six. I need this for the next. I press continue. Then the um, then I have to give it a name. Uh, Abab Conf Bank and a bank number. So you could also add a Swift code here, uh, but it's not mandatory. And you see. We have created a bank. Um, so that's if if you remember, it's also a fame uh, a favorite example of Barpi bank create in in former times. So so it's the same. So you know, I'm I'm just I'm I'm just a technical guy, I'm not from the application side of the house. But what you can see, it's fairly it's fairly easy now to create a UI. For, for those released uh, APIs. But you have to know here, and, and, and this is worth to, to have a look at this, and how do you get, probably the, your, your, your users have already the authorizations, right? Because, um, but, but then you can have a look here in the documentation, and um, then you find they will change this here in the, the, the own so-called own authorization context. This is the list of authorization objects that are technically checked by such a released BO. So there we doc we SAP document this. So that's that's part of our delivery. So if a if a BO is 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 released an in interface, then this has to be maintained. And then you see here this, and, and this is then the authorization I had to create manually, but probably in a customer scenario, your 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 employees have already this. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we we take this with us, Andrea. <laughs> yeah, my my colleague also named Andre uh, 
who who has developed uh, who is who who's developed this is is here here in me and we I cannot comment on this, but we would have to check with them. Yeah. Okay. Next generator. So we have um, how much time is left? I think. Okay. We have now this um, rub B O on no on one. I spring immer ganz nach oben. Um, Okay. So now we have a look at a uh, lab preview. So that's the generator for extension fields. So, and why is this necessary? Um, you can follow a hands-on script, RUP 630, and then you will see why it's necessary because um, if, we have a, if we have an extensible RUPBO, right? Um, there are different extension points. So in principle, you can you can extend the service definition, service projection, or the BO int so the so the uh, BO interface. Um, but here, this wizard now concentrates on the data model. Data model could could uh, here means we are adding a field to an entity. So from uh, from the key user perspective, you have. There are tools, but here we are talking about developer extensibility. And this is now in a picture of a extensible RUPBO. And these objects you see here are part of a normal RUPBO. But if you want to create an extensible RUPBO, you have to have in addition, in addition for each entity, three additional objects. And if you now want to add fields, you have to create six for six CDS views an extension. And this is what this generator does. You right click on the uh, interface projection view, again select generate other repository objects, and then you select the, uh, the entry extension fields. And um, what does it generate? As you have seen on the slide, you, you, we, we see then it, it will generate extensions for the consumption view, for the extension, the, uh, for the view extension, the interface view, the restricted base view, this R, and the draft query view. And it will add, and it will create an append structure for the structure, which is part of your extensible table. So all this will be done by the generator. How does it work? For this, I have to switch to another system. That's our test system for 2408. Here, this is the extensible RUPBO. And this is the what the generator has created. So I would I would sell if I I would select select this entry here. I can check here repository objects and then I can choose extension fields. And then the dialogue will uh, continue, and it will then, in the end, create these five data definitions. So the one that adds this then as a field into the into the uh, into the app, and on all these uh, uh, levels. And if I now start the service mining of the original simple app. What I can then see is that I now I'm able to enter a holiday ID as an additional field. So that, that shows up there. This is quite convenient. So you can also, with the wizard, add a Several fields at once, so it's not it's 
it's not necessary uh, just to uh, to run it just for one field. So again, a few to do's. Um, you have to. Um, Nee, das war das mit dem, mit dem richtigen. Jetzt bei dem. Sorry. Springt immer ins Falsche. Ja, so the, uh, the to do here basically is that you have to check the knowledge transfer document of the to be extended. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Ich bin jetzt. Sorry, I. There's no to do, sorry, I was a little bit distracted here. Then we have uh, uh, AI, which is uh, which helps us. You, you see, these are complex uh, objects. And also with an upcoming version, we will have the option to generate repository objects uh, AI powered. And what does AI do? So you have to, um, you can then Describe what you want here, for, for example, create a transaction application for a library, create one entity for books, a second for borrowing, and then meaningful names for all fields and create the objects with, let's say, uh, a suffix AF1. That, that, that I have run, and this results then in, a, in, a, uh, in an object on the right hand side. So this is now for demo purposes, so we will have to work on this because it generates everything. You would have to change the field names, right? Or you want to, but this step will come. It just now, it, it shows that, it, that it's possible to do such things. And um, when we will then have, we, when we will have the option to, yeah, the, the developer will, will, let's say, can work on this or refine this, then it will become more practical, right? But it shows definitely the um, yeah the power that 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 can be done there. But I see personally more the power of AI later on. If you then, for example, create a unit test or or all these ugly stuff that nobody wants to write, but which is very very important. There we we see definitely more options than here. But it's cool for demo purposes. Um, I can have a quick quick show. How much time do I have now? Oh, noch eine halbe Stunde. So schnell war ich. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. There, there will be probably more Q and A. So let, let me show this here how it works. So here I've prepared this. If we can try out what. Um, so I I can test it here. I can start this. I can enter the package z abap conf2, so it's it's empty. And like a beer shop. What? Like a classic example in a in a shop. In a beer shop? Beer shop, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Beer shop, okay. You will ask whether I'm older than 16, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, create one entity. First entity would be for shelves or what a beer shop? What 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 what? What? Um, what? The uh, for for um, the Marken, what's it? Marken of English uh, brands, right? Brewery. Yeah. Bre brewery, exactly. Yeah. Brew breweries. Uh, a second entity for um, okay, yeah. Um, that says Zorten. Uh, like a bottle or a can. Uh, hmm? a type, a bottle, can types. Oh, types. Okay, yeah, types. Types. Create meaningful names for e fields. Okay. Create object name. Let's say okay with a prefix. Uh, a um, Heineken. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, no. no. No, 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 okay, okay, okay. Then, then we, um, uh, was haben wir hier in der Gegend? Um, Wälder, Wälder, okay, Wälder. Okay, no, okay, they, okay, let's, okay, my beer, okay, so it should not, I don't get any money here, right? So, 
Okay, th this will now this will now work some time. Unfortunately, I have used the same ADT, so I cannot switch now to the other one. But okay. Yeah. Hey. Okay, let's let's press next and um, let's see when this will be generated, and we will have a look at this. So, tech, uh, but, but what you can technically see is that in in the back there there is the more advanced version of the ADT generator. So the one that you first saw in the beginning, that just right now can do one table. So technically it's the same framework. So it can do more. So stay tuned. We will we will work on that. Um, okay. In the meantime, I can uh, I I can talk about the tier two RFC generator. So. Uh, you remember those talks when you, you have an RFC or several RFC function modules, especially BARPs you want to call. And if you want to do this in, in a tier one, that won't work because uh, this is not allowed. Therefore, the recommendation is that you write wrappers around this. And um, now I saw then the block um, a post a tutorial that shows here is an example how you can write such a wrapper. Unfortunately, the tutorial did not say how you come to that, right? So how, how do I define the types, for example? So how does it work? Um, it came to my mind, actually, we have already this since years. It's the good old uh, transaction ACO proxy. So the ACO proxy is a transaction that can, can be used to generate a class, a wrapper class for RFC function modules, because especially for the use case to be used in Steampunk or in other environments. Okay, it, it, it then does not generate as, let's say, recommended an interface and a factory class. So what I did is I basically wrote a report that calls ACO proxy takes the code which is being generated, then creates then from the generated class an interface and, uh, and, and, re and, and do some renamings in the coding. And finally, you get this. I will talk to the, I'm, I'm, we will make this then also part of the standard. And you can get the code here in GitHub. So the, um, Here's how it basically works. You have a you have a a, a report that um, where you can select the different function modules, and then um, you can specify the names of the class, the factory class, and the interface, and then then you generate this. And um, yeah, I can show it here in. You, as it works, and um, it generates a, an interface, a class, and a factory class. And you can, um, okay, our, our brewery service is finished. Yeah. Okay, we have to press the publish button. We see here, we expose a brewery and a, okay, a B type, okay. <laughs> okay. And, um, but it has generated, um, let's see what it, what do we have here in breweries? Hmm. Yes. What, what do you mean by publish? V for admin. Yeah. Yes, sure. Um, it should. I, I would have to check it. it. It should be possible, but it's always a problem with the um, with the. It might be a problem with the client settings because technically publishing an OData v4 service means is a is a is a 
is not generating a repository object, but it is a customizing entry. In my opinion, it should work. So, but yeah, v, 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 V2 is a different story. V2 is generating a repository object. And um, I know I know it where, where some client settings forbid customizing, or they have then a different client for customizing than for development. And then if you then press this publish button, there is a problem if I remember correctly, but we can have a look at it. It should work in principle. Yes. Okay, so we have now our brewery and um, Yeah, okay, we can create a brewery with a brewery ID. Okay, you see, not so many people drinking beer here. And so name, okay, name and location is there and we can have a, um, so it's, it's using um, semantic, no, it's UUID based key field, but we can enter here a type ID and a type name. So yeah, would, would work as a starting point. But we wanted to have a look at the at the RFC generator that that's also here. So here, oh, sorry, I have to start Subgui now. Maybe I maybe I have to do now five euro in the in the box from Thomas Fiedler, right? So so the. So the report is here is the ZR tier two. You will start this. Um, okay, we have we have first to create a package. Let's create a package, test ABAP conf tier two. So I create the package, then I switch back to the report. Okay, we can we can select here um, BAPI. Um, here create, and we can add more. Let's say uh, I think BAPI. Here change you see right always the same demos, and um, you you select those and here we it's like ABAP conf ABC and uh, the package is the one here, but we as you can see we could we could also use here a nice value help. And we run this. This now under the hood calls the API, generates the class, and it is um, it then generates the other objects as well. And what it also does, it uh, releases, it performs a C1 release of the factory class and the interface. So we can switch back to ADT. There is the package. If we refresh now, we see here the generated objects. So that's the first, the factory class is very simple. Um, what is more interesting is then the interface. So here we see that that for all these not released types or data elements, so shadow uh, shadow types are being generated, and um, the the class which is being which is then actually uh, calling this wrapper is here. Anything what is left to do is here that we 
Um, in, in, in the private method here, and I just talked to Thomas Fiedler, so we have code completion, the, uh, the code sample, though, that, that's then, this is not so easy to generate, so that could potentially also be generated, but not by just uh, on this simple approach I took. Good. Yeah, last, last not least, um, uh, source-based RUP generator as well, um, which is also available via GitHub, um, which I have developed. So that is available for S4, S4 HANA 2021 and later, and for ABAP environment as well. Um, it's described in the community. And what, what is it? What are the key facts? It's an open source-based project that I run since 2020. Uh, it's it's Z code, and it's based on the Xco libraries we have uh, we have uh, published. And technically, I use uh, a RubBO to generate other RubBOs, and um, I collect information there. Uh, I generate a JSON which represents the structure of the BO, and then you can generate even deep structures deep structured RAPIO, so header, item, sub-item, and so on. Um, yeah, that, 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 that works as follows. You, you would install this here in, in your system. Like, uh, what is this? So in an S4 system, it looks like this. There is the, there you would create a package like test. And then you would have a service binding here. And here you see, uh, I used the preview. And then you can uh, start this Fior Elements preview. And then you create a project. So let's say similar, similar approach as with SCGW. <laughs> You remember, I'm also product manager for SAP Gateway. And um, then you start with, you can select the data type, let's say like table, implementation type, managed or unmanaged. Then different binding types can be selected, whether it's draft enabled or not. For partners of interest, you can generate extensible RUPBOs, so it will add all the annotations that are necessary for RUPBO to become released, so I will not do that here. Then let's say you can give it a name like sales order for the first entity. Then you can select here tables. This is type ahead support that works in fewer elements. Um, package, okay, I have to look it up now what, what I have there. Um, let's say, let's say take, um, Say take a new, let's say maybe a new one, it's easier. Test of up conf seven seven. Okay, we select this package. It's automatically then selected, then you create a project. And um, you could, for example, add here a suffix to the names of the objects. And you see here why I'm using this here. It's the, the, the first entry here in entity. Here you have to specify the mappings for the fields. So these, this is the mapping you will later see in, in the behavior definition. Let's say this is the UUID based key field. These are the fields for, for the semantic annotations. And here it suggests already meaningful names. And what's a nice feature is really, you can change the field names here. 
Okay, I press apply. Then you could even add a child table. Press OK. Then you have here a second entry, the same. You have to perform the mapping. All the other information is already selected. Why? Because the tables that I'm using here are smart. OK, smart in a sense. They, they are already good used here in. So if you, if you create tables and you want to have a data model with, with which is your UID based, you should have here, let's say the key field should be a UID based field. And on the second level, you need a field to, to store the parent your UID. And if you would add a third end level, you would even have to store the parent and the root your UID. So starting from there, only two are. This is necessary for RUB to find back the way. OK, we press apply. If I now press create, nothing is generated yet. It still, it technically um, has created the JSON here. This contains all the information of the RUB BO to be generated. You have to press a button and then it uses BGPF. It, it's run in the background because generating means commits and uh, therefore it will run. It will take a while. Let's say. Oh, finished already. You see, it's too fast. Who is the RDT link? Ah, okay. Here, there is the ADT link. You can navigate from here to the which one? This one. And here it has generated then the complete RAPI O for you. With sales order, and it also has added value helps for uh, currencies and unit of measures. So no logic insight, right? So there is still something for you as a developer to do, right? Um, and that will probably also the case if AI does does something, right? So it, it will, all the normal use cases, so this uh, not so interesting coding, that, that will be taken part. And that's good. Still, if it's uh, the more sophisticated stuff, I guess will still be, Something that you as a, okay, here it has added as a, a poor man's approach for um, for a, 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 for the semantic key. So for the number sales order one, yeah, that's basically what you can do with, uh, with if it comes to generating uh, RUB BOs. One moment. So this is how it works with this. So it, it, it works similar like a key user tool. And um, you can further information. So I will add all these links to the different uh, um, generators. So you can find here we have tutorials for this, how, how this works. So and uh, that will be shared by the um, ABAPConf uh, organizers. Any questions? Even in a bug development tools, you can create your own custom 
there is no documentation how to create these templates. It seems like the syntax of those templates is you, completely like. Uh, you, you mean you mean code templates in? Um, you, you mean you mean you mean? If you go to Apache Development Tools right now, yeah, yeah, I know. Right, right button, new object, let's say right. Yeah. You can create there also custom code code template. So if you just create a new right. Button. You mean in a class? You you mean code snippets? So no. Or? Uh, no, but it's called template. I think. Like for example, in your package, you click right button, new. Other object and just type the template on you. Code composer template, yes. But the point is the syntax for those templates is not described anywhere. So there is no documentation saying like, okay, this is the construction for the loop, this is the construction for the variables. Okay. I was I only found few uh, uh, on how to form few few pages with just some examples how it may work, but not let's say as extensive. So maybe the question like does it exist anywhere? And if it exists, I, I, maybe it's a I, good idea. To I don't I don't know it now, but um, maybe you can drop me an email and uh, I can talk with my ADT colleagues. Yeah, because indeed I think I, I, I since it's part of the menu, I would expect that there is some inter at, at least some internal documentation, or we would can maybe at least start with writing a small blog post how it works. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so Part of the above documentation as well. Because it's yeah, sure, sure. It's, uh, I know, but yeah. you, you know, the problem is uh, okay, no, you don't want to know it. It's, so, writing documentation is a complicated yeah, task at SAP. So, it's uh, <laughs> because uh, we, we have uh, a lot of use cases for generating another object. So, here we saw RAP, yeah, we, but we also want, uh, let's say, open API clients or GraphQL clients. I, 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 yeah. point, point taken, uh, um, we. I, I, I will try to find out what what this uh, thing does actually. Any more questions? Yeah. Presentation interesting. Uh, my question is: uh, this generator are generating many objects, and uh, what uh, it's better practice? What would you advise for, for example, uh, to still get overview on generated object? So don't. The situation we have uh, many objects which may be not uh, actual more, not many trashing systems, um, etc. What you what you have here, um, okay, I, I should unfortunately it's not part of the normal standard view. There is um, uh, is that, um, relation explorer. There's the relation explorer that sh should help you a little bit. Um, and if I click now here on a on an object, it should show something here. Okay. Oh, the link with editor is not clicked here. Okay. Yeah, habe ich doch. Okay, and then you can the, the the relation explorer should give you some kind of help uh, to, to to show we, the, these these objects are part, and you see here also information about standard operations. But yes, so you you have lots of objects, but they have all a meaning, right? So technically, for example, you could all do put also the UI annotations in the in the consumption view, but it's not recommended to do so. Yeah, I understand. I have then I have yeah, the, all these generators are one shot, so it's not a regeneration. So it's. Um, I need. I need to begin from scratch. Yeah, or you would edit the the generated code. Yeah. That's yeah. What do you mean by that? You mean okay? You mean my UI? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what it does, um, the, it 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 deletes the generated objects. 
Um, one, this is blue here. Yeah, no? Yeah. Okay, the, the um, delete repository object deletes the generated repository object. And if you press the delete button, at least it should check whether there are still objects and it will refuse. So delete will de delete the entry here in the Fiori elements. So it's just this simple wrap entry, the metadata information. Yeah, uh, yes, hopefully. Um, yeah. um, we, we can try this, but um, it should. No? Ah. Yeah. Yes? I have one more question. Have you ever considered as a product team generation of above artifacts without above? Let's say with other stacks as a Java or JavaScript. Because we have a lot of code generators. Let's say Cup. Cup is capable to generate artifacts for HANA or I don't know, another database. Why not Cup can generate, uh, let's say, RAP, something like this? That you have to ask the Cup colleagues, but I, I wouldn't recommend to do that. So, because in, in, in the end, uh, Xco is nothing else than than a than a wrapper. What 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 ADT does, and I wouldn't see any benefit of using now another platform just for the sake of code so, generation. Example, we saw right now the the, the uh, AI example, yeah. and uh, after our prompt, it took some time to generate physically all the objects. Now, now system, it, it, right? it 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 actually first calculated what is being generated. It yeah. it. It, it works in a similar way what what you saw here for me so it it, it it generates some kind of matter information and then it will generate so, so it, if you change the prompt it will not uh, delete all the objects no 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 the, the, if if the okay the prompt is 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 first uh, considering what it what what's going in there but I'm it it makes no sense in my opinion here to you uh, it what might make a sense if you would let's say would come from the outside would 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 provide this metadata information and then give it to an API but the generation process as such is so deeply integrated into the other platform mm -hmm. that 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 makes no sense in my opinion yeah Okay, the question was why do we need, so that, that, that came also in the large, uh, why do we need such a wrapper? Because otherwise you, you need this wrapper if you want to use such a not released function module. If you would try to add a, a call to that function module in your in your ABAP for cloud development code, you have you are in, you are in an on-prem system and you want to use ABAP cloud, for ABAP for cloud development, so the clean code. Then you must not call an, our, such a function module directly. So uh, the idea is SAP would be so nice and kind and to provide you a released API. The use case is here now, okay, this API is maybe not yet there. It will maybe come with the next release. And therefore, we have identified lots of uh, RFC function modules that are in quotes stable. We have we are not releasing them. We are just flagging them as stable APIs or or classic you know, classic APIs is the official word. So it, it's stable in a sense. Nobody will go to change the PR create MAP. He will get lots of people knowing. So if you, if you would add the code add the code here, that, that won't work. So but it's they are not. They cannot be released in the sense that they would work with ABAP Cloud. Therefore, we decided to at least specify those that that are usable. But we, we SAP, we don't want to let's say to ship such wrapper code. But uh, the idea is now to 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 ship some kind of like this tool here that that would generate this 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 code for you that that performs the wrapping
so what what if it is, so the idea is once we would ship such an API, you would refactor your code and then call the new released API instead the one instead of the wrapper class. No, it, you won't need the so the wrapper class is just a let's say a workaround or that you, you nobody likes to generate those wrapper classes, but it's 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 let's say it's a requirement if you want to develop in tier one in in ABAP cloud, but but still have to call classic APIs that where is no released API yet. So, not a question. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, um, yeah. I hope that helps you to get an over to that, that. This helped you to get an overview. What? So, still there are. Um, yes, yes, still there are uh, things where uh, you, yeah, where you, where you have uh, to. You, you still have to code in the end, right? So. This, all these generators basically do this uh, ugly work for you, creating CDS views with associations and then generate activating those at the same time. Nobody likes this, and uh, and it's and 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 the generators in the end also help if they provide meaningful naming conventions, so that that you follow a name. And that's also my favorite. Please try to follow a naming convention similar to what SAP S for HANA. Uh, uses because that makes it easier for the SAP support in the end to look at your RAP BOs. Uh, 